So let's go and think about this. So we have an angle, right? Now what I want you guys to think about, so we have this angle 30 degrees. Now again, we've talked about 30 degrees represents the rotation between these two rays, right? It's basically how much we're rotating. And that was our measurement of degrees. And again, we just picked 360 as this arbitrary value. But some people that are still not having trouble paying attention might kind of miss out on that. But it's really important for you guys to understand that it's just a arbitrary measurement, right? It's just 30 degrees. But is there another way that we can calculate the rotation on this 30 degrees? So we use, a lot of times we use this little arc here to represent that rotation, right? The two rays have been rotated 30 degrees. But let's like, think about this as far as like a measure. Like how far of a distance did we travel to go from here to here, right? And just think about that. It's saying, OK, you went a certain distance. Well, what about like this distance, this distance, or this is? As we keep on going out, we have different arc measures, right? Mm -hmm. We have different lengths of these kind of arcs. And then obviously, guys, as we like increase our angles, what I want you guys to see is that these arcs are proportional with each other. right? They all kind of grew at a different point where they're all proportional with one another. And what's important about this is, I know this is getting too bad, but if we go 30 degrees, we know we go all the way around is 360. right? A rotation would be 360. Well, how far did I travel? Don't think of distance, but what is the general understanding of how far I traveled? A which a circle, but how far is that? What do we call the distance around a circle? Circumference. So the circumference equals 2 pi r. Now, obviously, based on whatever circle we're talking about, all of these circles have a different radius. Would you guys agree? Right? But what I want you guys to understand is the, the proportion of how far you traveled is still the same. They all, like each of them, all went your distance around the circle, right? Based on the angle, like these are all proportionally equal. When I increase it, they are all proportionally greater. And then when I go all the way around, they create a circle, but they're all in relation to each other of a proportion of your radius. If you guys remember, remember when we did the special right triangles and I gave you, th I gave you three triangles and, of thir and with 30 degrees, and we calculated cosine of 30 degrees, and they gave us the same cosine of 30 degrees, which is square root of 3 over 2. It didn't matter what the sides of the triangles were. They gave the same radius. So it doesn't matter what the radius is. You're still going to have the same proportion right, of distance traveled around based on your circumference. So if we want to make things simple, we can make things simple and represent the distance that we traveled around, make r be our favorite number, which we made triangle simple. We can make r simple by using. What number should we use for r that would make everything really easy? One. Let's use 1. If we make 1, then that means our circumference is equal to 2 pi. So if the distance, if the rotation around a circle is 360, and the distance traveled around is 2 pi, we could say that the unit of measurement for that angle, right? because wouldn't you guys agree, like? This angle okay, is traveled around. Uh, this angle traveled around is 360. But it's also the distance traveled around that you made to make that angle is also equal to 360. So they're different units of measure. Where 360 represents like that rotation, 2 pi kind of represents the distance you traveled around. But you can still use them for angles. Another sense is obviously we could figure out, well, what is exactly pi then equal to? Well, just divide by 2 on both sides. 180 degrees is equal to pi. So halfway around a circle is pi. Now that comes into very important, very helpful for us. Because if we're saying halfway around a circle is pi, can we break that up into smaller angles? Yeah. What if I wanted to say, I don't want to measure the angle pi, because that's halfway around the circle, Cassie. What if I said, I want an angle of pi halves? Well. Pi halves, you just take the angle pi and you split it into two. That means pi halves is nine, it's really the same thing as 90 degrees, right? Could you also break it up into fourths? Yeah. You could take pi, here's pi, 
and we could break pi up into force. So what if I wanted to sketch an angle that was pi force? Could I sketch the angle pi force? Yeah. That's from here to there, which is the same thing as 45 degrees. That's pi over 4. What about could I sketch 3 pi over 4? Sure. That's force. That's three of them. So 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. Okay. Now, what it comes into is then, well, like, if we're looking at 30 degrees, right, we're representing 30 degrees. Um, let's think about that, is how is 30 degrees kind of like a fraction of 180? So 30 degrees, we'd have 60, then we'd have 90, right? Did you guys agree? 30, 60, 90? So really, that's broken up into 6. So what if I took pi, did the same thing, but I broke it up into 6. That therefore, 30 degrees is equal to pi over 6. They give you the same measure of an angle. Okay, That unit of measure, <coughs> talking about pi, is what we call radians. Now, where did radians come from? We're talking about pi. I understand pi. I kind of get pi. Kind of makes sense. Circumference, pi, break it up. But where, where do radians come from? Why are we talking about radians? Just from the outside, the middle of Well, the radius oh. is exactly what you said. Basically. Distance from the center to the circle. Now, again, it doesn't matter how big of a circle you're talking about. This relationship is going to remain true. And I'll actually I'll do another one. Let's do another circle. This one has a. Um, let's do a blue, a blue radius, or a red. Yeah, I got blue. OK? So the definition of a radian is the measure of the radius wrapped around the circle. And the best way I like to think about this is take a measure of your radius with a thing of pasta, with a pasta noodle like a spaghetti noodle, measure it, drop it in hot water, and then wrap it around the circle, wrap it around the circumference of the circle, because we know that that distance is also a unit measure, which we've used in pi. But if we're turning, talking about it in terms of radians, or the radius, we call that a radian. So if I took this radius and I wrapped it around once, it would probably be somewhere around there, which that angle is theta equals 1 radian. Now watch what happens. What if I took this radius and I wrapped it around the circle? It would probably be right around there. Do you guys see how that angle is the same? doesn't matter how big the radius is. We just want to use one because it makes life easy. But it doesn't matter. I could keep on getting bigger and bigger circles, and it's still going to be the same. Then let's do two. So if I did two, I'd probably be somewhere around here. Two of these blue radians would probably be somewhere around here. Well, if I draw a rotation of angles, there. So that angle is called two radians. It's not in terms of pi. Just the radius wrapped around. Let's do three. Three would probably be somewhere around there. Using this measurement, I'm just taking there. That'd be around three radians. And so from here to here, theta equals three. Oh man, we're really, really close to getting half to getting all the way. Wouldn't it be cool if the number of radiuses wrapped around a circle was exactly half? No. Wouldn't it be cool if the number of radiuses wrapped around a circle was exactly half of a circle, half of a circumference? Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, it'd be nice, right? If this was perfect, perfectly half of a circle, like three radiuses, it would just make life so much easier. We've, it would be a nice little number. But it's not. And it's not even like half. It's like a little sliver. It's like we're just, we have a little bit more to get to halfway around a circle. So we're a little bit short. But I bet whatever number of radiuses that wrap around a circle, halfway around a circle, is probably a pretty important number. It's probably something that people tried to calculate for a really, really long time because it really kind of mysteriously, why, why do we have this little extra point here? What is this length? Right? And that number that they spent so much time, and we still do spend so much time trying to figure out, is just pi. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is another way of thinking of the definition of pi. The definition of pi, excuse me, is just the number 
Ch-ch-ch. Ch-ch-ch. Pi is just the number of radiuses wrapped around the circle. Because this little extra here, this little section, is 0.14159 dot, 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 keeps on going on. That's the extra, extra portion of the radius that we need to go halfway around the circle. OK? Make sense? A little bit? Más o menos? OK. Um, all right, so let's go and practice. Maybe try graphing some. Maybe that'll help. 